Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential trigonometric equation. We have 16 to the power sine squared x plus 16 to the power cosine squared x equals 10. Now, for these kinds of questions, for example, when you have something like a to the power f of x plus a to the power g of x equals a constant k, Unless you find the relationship between f of x and g of x or use something called AMGM inequality, these equations are fairly hard to solve. Sometimes you can guess and check. But we're going to find a relationship between these two functions. And you must know this from trigonometry. The very first identity probably or one of the most important identities is that sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So this allows you to write one in terms of the other. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's write cosine squared x as 1 minus sine squared x. All right. This is what we're going to use in our equation. Let's go ahead and replace it. 16 to the power sine squared x plus 16 to the power cosine squared x equals 10. I'm going to replace cosine squared with this. And that's going to give me the following. 16 to the power sine squared x plus 16 to the power 1 minus sine squared x equals 10. And then I can go ahead and split this into two numbers like a quotient because when we divide powers with the same base, we subtract the exponents, right? So let's go ahead and write it this way. 16 to the power 1 divided by 16 to the power sine squared x equals 10. And now 16 to the power 1 is 16, of course. Now we can go ahead and use substitution. Let's go ahead and replace this with y. That gives us the following. y plus 16 over y equals 10. And as you know, this is a quadratic equation. Multiply both sides by y. You get the following. Subtract 10y. And factor. This can be written as y minus 2 times y minus 8 equals 0. Remember, you're looking for two numbers whose product is 16 and whose sum is negative 10, right? Those numbers are negative 2 and negative 8. From here we get y equals 2 or y equals 8. But we're not looking for y because we're looking for x. But y is equal to 16 to the power sine squared x. Let's rewrite it. And I'm going to go ahead and rip, um, set this equal to 2 and 8 separately and solve each equation. And at the end, I'm going to show you a graph. So if this is equal to 2, 2 can be written in so many ways, but let's go ahead and manipulate 16. 16 is 2 to the fourth power. This is 2 to the power 1. From here we get 4 sine squared x equals 1. And sine squared x equals 1 fourth. Notice that we didn't square both sides. We just used substitution and we came up with a quadratic. So all solutions should be valid. From here I get the following. Sine x is 1 half or negative 1 half. Let's go ahead and find solutions between 0 and 2 pi. And then you can generalize by adding multiples of 2 pi, of course. So from here, x can be pi over 6, which is same as 30 degrees. Or you can subtract the pi over 6 from pi to get 5 pi over 6. If sine x is negative 1 half, then x can be 7 pi over 6. And you can subtract this from pi, and that's going to give you negative pi over 6, which is the same thing as 11 pi over 6. Okay? 
In other words, these two solutions should add, should add up to pi or an odd multiple of pi. In, this, in the second case, they add up to 3 pi, but 3 pi is equivalent to pi on the unit circle if you ignore the rotations. Okay? So those are uh, some of the solutions. And then, now we're going to replace y with 8. y, again, is 16 to the power sine squared x. And if it's equal to 8, now this one is a little different because we have to write both of these numbers as powers of 2. So this is 2 to the 4th. And this is 2 to the 3rd. This gives us 4 sine squared x equals 3 and sine squared x equals 3 fourths. If you square root both sides, you get two solutions. Either sine x is root 3 over 2 or negative root 3 over 2. Make sense? And now from here we get the following solutions between 0 and 2 pi. Root 3 over 2 is pi over 3, which is 60 degrees, right? Sine 60 degrees is the same as cosine 30 degrees. So this is pi over 3. Or you can subtract it, uh, subtract pi uh, minus that. It's going to be 2 pi over 3. First and second quadrants. Remember that? This one and this one. Or on the second one, this can be 4 pi over 3. And then... The other one, well, you can subtract 4 pi over 3 from pi. That's going to give you negative pi over 3, which is the same thing as 5 pi over 3. Or you can add pi to 2 pi over 3 to get 5 pi over 3. So those are the eight solutions that we got so far. Let's go ahead and list them. We got pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And then we got 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And then we got pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. Of course, you can add multiples of 2 pi to this all the time and just get general solutions. For example, x can also be written as pi over 6 plus n times 2 pi, where n is an integer. So if you add 2 pi to this, you're going to get 13 pi over 6, so on and so forth. Make sense? You can do it for all these solutions. And then now let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and you'll see all the solutions pretty much. Negative pi over 3, pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, so on and so forth. And this is what the graph looks like. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. And bye-bye.